Well, the articulated snake print has finished. I've got high hopes for it, but has it actually worked? It's time to find out. Hey, how's it going and welcome along. I'm Roy from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So, welcome to this, another tech review video. I have been sent the Creality Sir Moon V1 Pro. So here it is, it's arrived and it's time for me to sort of have a little play with it. Now, as always, I don't know too much about it. I don't like to investigate before my first impression. I do know that it's got Wi-Fi. It claims that the build plate does not require leveling. It's also supposed to be ultra quiet. It's an enclosed printer with a built-in camera. It supports PLA, ABS, TPU, and PETG. Apparently, the nozzle is quick disassembly, so you can change the nozzle fast and easily. And it's got the filament sensor and power outage stopping pausing thing and it's got a 4.3 inch touchscreen and it retails somewhere in the region of about the 400 pound mark depending on where you get it from so without further ado let's get into this thing and have a look and see what it's like <laughs> uh, probably not actually i'll attempt to show you how it's packaged so it's packaged pretty neatly. So inside we've got a manual, we've got the various tools we're gonna to want, we've got power lead, and a little reel of test filament. And a big egg box. Right. So nicely enough, it's not actually that heavy. A lot of the printers I've been playing with recently have all been massive and weigh a ton. So it's nice to get something I can just lift out of the box, to be fair. After all that exertion, I need a quick cup of tea. What can I say in English? Okay, so the unit. So the bed, it's not huge, but it's quite nice and compact. So at first glance, it seems like it kind of suits all its measurements quite well. Right, let's get some of this peely off. So now that all the peel is off, let's have a quick look inside. So this is how we receive it, and you can see here we've got kind of a bit of a bit of foam padding just to keep it secure, and there's a bunch of cable ties and so on which we need to remove. And we can see there that's the magnetic build plate. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to remove some of the cable ties. It's very important that you do this because I have in the past thought I'd done this and then it turned out I hadn't. And then I'll press the home button so that it works its way back down. And once done, remember to dispose of your rubbish responsibly. So now that that's all ready, we can see the actual printer. Just to kind of go around it, you know, we've got this door at the front that enables you to access your print beds. There's a touch screen and an SD card reader. Around the side, there's another window. And over on this side, you can see the real filament holder, and then there's an entry for the filament to go straight in the side. So it's quite a nice, neat, kind of compact machine. So at first glance, this is actually really nice. It feels pretty solid. <laughs> so first impressions is that this is a quite a nice machine. It feels nice and solid. It feels well made. You know, it doesn't feel sort of cheap. So, good first impression. Well, I believe that that is basically the setup that is needed, and I'm now ready to move on to turning it on. And maybe time for another quick cup of tea. So it boots up really quickly. There's a bit of a hum from the fans. It's not too bad. It's still a little bit louder than I would like from the, you know, the first moment you turn it on, but still pretty good. And then on the screen here, we've got the option for print a file, print mode, device info, print setup. And then at the bottom there, we've got all of the various different temperatures and speed and so on. So clicking device info, yeah, this, this just gives me kind of all the details about the, uh, the printer, all the kind of usual stuff you would expect under there. Print setup, so here we can set up the Wi-Fi case fan so just hitting that turns off the case fan 
and I can definitely hear a difference in that audio now. So at least it's optional, you can turn it on and off, that's good. Uh, lighting control so we can turn the lights on and off. Pause while opening the door. So if you open the door, that'll pause the print. Auto leveling, so I'm gonna press that. Right, so re-leveling, okay. Let's see what it does. Please wait, processing. It's alive, it's moving. Now the bed is working its way up. Okay, so for leveling the bed, the way this works is it moves to various points on the bed. You put your piece of paper in, move it until it's just catching, and then hit save. This will then move to the next point. Do the same thing again till it's just catching, and then hit save. Boom, done. So let's get some filament in there. Now I've got this rather nice red PET G, which I'm gonna to use to test it. But something I always do is snip the end of the filament at a slight angle to give it a point, just to help it guide through. Just a little tip there. So for the filament, I'm gonna test it by not looking in the manual. I'm gonna see how intuitive it actually is. So firstly, I can tell you pull this out and that gives you somewhere to put your filament reel. Next, I'm gonna poke it in through this little hole over here. And I can see it goes all the way down to there. Now in the menu, I'm gonna go print mode and then feed and retreat. Feed, insert filament, click okay. So it's gonna heat the nozzle up to 240 degrees. So there's a little tab just on the top of the print head that you just press and there we can see our filament is coming through. Okay, so I'm gonna press okay. And that's it done. And that is basically all the setup you need to do. The next thing is to get onto the Creality software. Let's slice a Benchy and print that out and see what it's like. Okay, you join me now over on the PC. So I'm going to sort out the Creality software and slice a Benchy. Now, the software you can download from the Creality site, just head over to um, the support and then the download center, go through, choose your printer, which in this case is the Sir Moon uh, V1, and then you can download your slicing software. It just so happens I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna do it again now, but that's how you grab that. So. I've got it, so I'm just gonna run this here. And here we are inside of the Creality Slicer. Now, uh, I've gotta try and remember, I used this last time with the Smart, so I need to add a printer. So I'm gonna add, and then I'm gonna come down and find this one. So it's the Sir Moon V1, okay. And then we'll add. Now hopefully I assume all of these settings are gonna be correct. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press next. Then I'm gonna drag in my Benchy. And there she is. I'm gonna change this though from PLA to generic pet G. And I'm gonna use all the default settings there. So standard, yeah, okay, fine. And I'm literally gonna leave it as that. Now a lot of people say to me like, oh, but oh, if you tweaked and if you did this, but it doesn't matter. What I'm testing here is if I print it with the default settings, what happens? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's hit slice. Okay, now it is saying two hours, 12 minutes. Normally it's an hour and 30, so that's quite long. And just to have a quick look here, yep, we can see that the slicing is like that, okay. Yep, whatever, I'm sure that'll be all fine. Right, now as I mentioned before, this does support Wi-Fi, so I could connect this to the Wi-Fi and then send the file over, but just for ease of what I'm just doing to get started, I'm gonna stick this file onto an SD card and pop it in the printer, and let's have a look and see how that comes out.
took just over two hours, about two and a half, ten minutes or something like that, which like I say is a little bit slower than I was kind of expecting. However, let's see how it's come out. So, the way the bed works is you just remove the uh, magnetic flexible bed, give it a little twist, and your print will pop free. At first glance, this looks like it's come out pretty well. Tiny little bit of stringing on the inside, which would be easy enough to clean up. And you can see it struggled a little bit with some of the archers. The underside is actually really good. So there's a close up of that. And overall, as a stress test, it's come out all right. So as a first, first print, pretty good. So I want to do something else now. So let's find something interesting and print that. Right, I thought we'd try something else now. So I went on to Thingiverse and I found this, three textured articulating snakes made by Dave Makes Stuff. And I thought this would be quite an interesting one to, to try, I never printed this before. And I quite like the idea of print in place articulated objects. So let's grab this and slice it up. Okay, I will drag the STL file into the Creality Slicer software and we should see our snake, there we go. Now, if I, just hit slice with the settings as they are. I'm curious to see how long. I've just realized as well. Let me just turn off my thing. You can actually see the, the <laughs> see the bar now. I didn't realize I was covering that up before, but um, let's let that slice. Okay, so that comes in at 15 hours and that's a bit long for my test. So I'm gonna see if I can tweak this to make it a little bit more palatable. So firstly, let's put it to 2.0 or 0 0.28 and we'll make sure it's got a decent infill. Also, I'm going to come to scale and I'm gonna set that to 75. Right, okay. And let's try slicing that. Oh, cancel. I just realized I left it on PETG, so I'm gonna change this to PLA and slice. So that comes in at six hours. No problem, we can live with that. So I'll go ahead and stick that onto an SD card and then we'll give that one a try. Well, the articulated snake print has finished. I've got high hopes for it, but has it actually worked? It's time to find out. Okay. Check this out. Let me bring this up close. So each little bit is just wiggling around just to, to loosen it up. Yep, so with a bit of jiggling, and there we go, with a bit of jiggling and we've now got our fully articulated snake. That is so cool. And as you can see, the print quality is spot on. Absolutely fine, I mean, to be fair, it's a really good model. But yeah, quality wise, that's come out really, really well. So now normally at this point in the video, I would do, here's five things I dislike about this printer, followed by five things I do like about it. And in all honesty, I've really struggled to find five things that I dislike about it. At the same time, having said that, I've struggled to find five things I particularly like about it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. It's kind of absolutely fine. In terms of the unit itself, it feels really good quality. It's really nice. It's a bit noisy. The print bed, it's not the biggest. It would be nice for it to be a little bit bigger. But for the footprint of the unit, it's about right. The fact that it's enclosed means you can do ABS without worrying about temperature issues. The touchscreen is extremely straightforward. It's nice and responsive. The way the filament is, is kind of all in place, this is all very neat and nice. In terms of the print quality that it does, again, it's fine. Could it be better? Yeah. Could it be worse? Yeah. Where am I going with this? I don't know. So yeah, the print quality, it's absolutely fine. As I always say, with some tweaking in the slicer settings, you could probably get immaculate prints out of this thing. The fact that it's got the magnetic removable bed, yeah, it's 
great, does the job, absolutely fine, works, perfect. Would I recommend this printer? Absolutely, this is a really good little printer. If you're just thinking of starting to get into the hobby, then I would say this would be a great shout as a first printer. So overall, nice printer, small footprint, great quality prints. Job's done. So if you did enjoy this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button. And then if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button as well. And pressing the little bell will inform you when I put up new videos. If you do that for me, I really appreciate it. It helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing uh, and would be fantastic. I've literally got another couple of printers queued up to make reviews for. So those videos will be coming soon. And I really hope to see you in the next one. All right, thanks again. Bye for now.